adventures of Lightning Jim. The famous Marshal and his deputy Whitey have been on the chase almost constantly for the past several months. And even United States Marshals need a rest occasionally. So the two of them, having no immediate assignment, have decided to spend a week or two in the quiet little town of Pecos, basking in the Arizona sunshine. They've registered at Ma Weatherford's hotel and are just coming out on the veranda after the evening meal. <laughs> you know, buddy, I'd plumb forgotten how good fried chicken could taste. Yo, and gravy, <laughs> and homemade biscuits, yeah. and strawberry yam, and, and coconut tea. Oh. Say, Lightning, I ain't had a meal like that for years. Ah, you know what I'm going to do now? No, uh, what you going to do, Lightning? This. I'm going to sit down here like this, put my feet up on the railing, like this. <sighs> and yes. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I'm going to do? No, why do what? I'm going to take this rocking chair uh, like this. Yeah. And uh, sit on like this. Yeah. And yes, rock. Oh, oh. If the boys could only see Whitey Larson now, the terrible sweet full of fried chicken just rocking back and forth. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, oh. I guess I lose my reputation. Yes, yes. Sure would, Whitey. <laughs> see, like him. Yeah. Look at that little band. He likes me a little more, this thing. Sure it does. <clears throat> Which one are you, um, British United States Marshal Lightning Jim Whipper? I am, partner. This here's my deputy, Whitey Larson. What might your name be, Sheriff? Yeah. Uh, how'd you know I was a sheriff? Uh, heard tell of me around the country? Well, can't say I have exactly, but saw your badge plain enough on your best. Oh, oh, oh sure. <laughs> you can tell from yeah. that. Well, I am mighty glad to meet you two. My name's Bunny. Septimus Bunny. Well, we're mighty glad to meet you too, Sheriff oh, Bunny. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Bunny? Uh, uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, I'll pull up a chair and join you for a spell. Uh, there. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, you ain't here on business, are you? Not hunting nobody? <laughs> nobody at all, Sheriff. Me and Whitey's just taking ourselves a little rest. Between hunts, so to speak. Uh, I thought so. News gets around fast in this community. Does. And when I heard tell you was staying here at Ma Weatherford's, I says... Well, I bet they ain't hunting nobody. That's why? Of course, why, Sheriff? Because they ain't nobody to hunt, that's why. <laughs> Nobody's going to try no dirty work around here as long as I'm, Sheriff. You can bet your bottom dollar. Ain't no better. Why, I've been Sheriff here for six years now. And you know what? No, what, Sheriff? Ain't been no trouble at all. Made a few arrests for being drunk and disturbing the peace. And uh, once Miss Booker had all her chickens stole right out from her chicken house. Gee, this why did you uh, catch the dirty thief, Sheriff? Uh, well, I uh, can't say that it did. Uh, but I found the feathers, all right. They'd been et. Yes, sir. Took right out of town and cooked and et. The signs was as plain as the nose on your face. <laughs> well, that was pretty bad, that was. Yo, yes, yeah, that's, that's certainly what's awful. Oh, uh, uh, mm. here comes John Marvin, our new freight agent. Uh, uh, come on up and uh, meet our distinguished visitors, John. Well, that's what I'm aiming to do. As soon as I heard Lightning Jim and Whitey Lawson was in town, I hurried right over. Yeah, wasn't no need to hurry, Mr. Marvin. He and Whitey's planning on staying a while. Yes, sir. It'll take a couple of mules to get me out of this rocking chair, <laughs> I tell you. Uh, uh, sit down, John. Sit down. I was just telling the men here that nobody would start no trouble around here as long as I was sheriff. They wouldn't take the chance. No, sir. Well, not unless it might be Wade Emerson. I wouldn't trust that breed at all. Well, I got my eyes on him all right. He won't start nothing. Still, it's a darn shame that decent folks have got to rub elbows with a horned toad like Wade. Well, one of these days, I'll catch him doing something, and then Who I... is this uh, Wade Emerson? What kind of a varmint is he, anyhow? Why, Marshal, haven't you heard about Blaze Emerson? Used to ride with the Black Gulch gang. Got sent to prison, died there a few years back. Oh, sure, we heard tell of Blaze, all right. See, he was a fast shooting old timer, all right. Well, this Wade we're talking about is his son. About 20 year old, I reckon. Come here a few years back, bought up a little piece of land not to make it in a cow pasture, and is trying to make a living out there. Well, what's he done that's wrong since he come here, I mean? Well, he ain't done nothing yet. But like father, like son, I always say, his pa was a bad one. Stands to reason that the kid ain't no good either. Well, so long as I'm sheriff, he ain't going to do nothing either. Well, I can't figure him out. Got a couple of cows, a few chickens, sells milk and eggs to Ma Weatherford here. Aside from that, he don't make enough to live on. Well, I reckon he's doing the best he can. Maybe trying to go straight, you know. A kid like that deserves a helping hand. Helping hand? Yeah. Ah, he deserves a good lesson. 
Made to realize that decent, respectable folks ain't gonna tolerate his kind hanging around. Well, I reckon the marshals here are kind of tired. Maybe we should mosey along and let them hit the hay. Ah, uh, sure. It's a good idea. Plenty of time for chin and later. The following day, Jim and Whitey spent ambling around the town, eating more of Ma Weatherford's good cooking and taking life easy in general. And then just before supper, they entered the hotel to hear sounds of a rather heated conversation between Ma and a rather imposing-looking stranger. I told you once and I'll tell you again. I ain't running no charity institution here. No money, no food. But my dear lady, you don't understand. I'm the great Albert Rockmorton, the greatest Shakespearean actor in all the United States. No, in all the world. Ah, oh, my Hamlet is unquestionably. Well, your Hamlet don't get to no ham and eggs around here. Now you be on your <laughs> way. What's trouble you, Ma? You're oh, the trouble, Ma. No trouble at all. Just another moocher trying to bum a meal. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I appeal to you. Surely you've heard of Albert Throckmorton, who played before the King of England at a command performance. Mind you, a command performance. Is that so? Hmm? I did bits of Hamlet. King Lear, Othello, and Macbeth. Ah, oh, but my Hamlet is my masterpiece. I'll give you a few lines. Oh, not me, you won't. I'm going back to see to my supper. Now you school. Yeah, I'd sort of like to hear some of that Shakespeare stuff. How would you happen to be here in town, Mr. Throckmorton? Well, uh, well, it, it's just a little strange. I got in a poker game on my way out here, and my losses huh. were heavy. The stage driver wouldn't accept my word that I could repay him as soon as I reached friends, so... So he put me off the coach. Yeah, pretty story. Wouldn't catch a fly if you used honey on it. Now you get out of here. Now, now, Ma, reckon you wouldn't care none if I was to pay for the gentleman's supper, now, would you? He could recite some of that Shakespeare to Whitey here. He'd oh, learn something. Oh, sure. <laughs> See, I'd like that. Uh, maybe you could even teach me some of that Shakespeare stuff, Mr. Tuck. Uh, Throckmorton, <laughs> my boy, Throckmorton. I'd be glad to, glad to. Of course, the interpretation takes years and years of practice. The interpretation, <laughs> well, I wouldn't have to learn that. Uh, you could kind of learn me something easier at first. Well, if you want to throw your money away, Marshal, now that's your business. I assure you that I shall repay your courtesy, gentlemen. I will wait for you over here. It is indeed a pleasure to meet you such connoisseurs of the dramatic art. He fished like me. What did he say? I ain't sure no myself. <laughs> He's done it. He's done it, the son of a thief. He can't flaunt the law on my face and get away with it. I'll show him. What's happened, Sheriff? What's happened? What are you yelling about? Plenty, that's what. That good-for-nothing Wade Emerson you thought was sticking up for. He's gone and robbed Joe Silver of the payroll for the bridge game. Oh, he ain't neither. Don't believe one word of it. So there. Was it seen, Sheriff? Tell us what happened. Did you ever get an excitement after all? As the bard once said, to vouch this is no proof without oh, more, wider and shut more. Shut up. Septimus. What happened? Uh, no, nobody knew what happened. Uh, but Joe got hit on the head tonight, just about an hour ago. He didn't see who hit him. But when he come to a uh, lying back in the alley there, the money for the payroll was gone. And just how does this Wade come into this? Why, because he's the only crook around here. I know them all. And he's the only one. His pa died in the pen, and I reckon that's where Wade will wind up. Oh, I don't think that's always true, Sheriff. Well, anyhow, I'm going to round up a posse right now and arrest him. And you can bet your bottom dollar here. Now, Marshal, now you just got to stop this. There ain't a finer boy living than this Wade Emerson. He can't help what his old man's done. He's trying to live honest, and these vultures won't let him. Now you just got to do something. Well, I reckon I can't, ma'am. The sheriff's in charge here. I don't have nothing to say about it. But lightning. Come along, Whitey. We'd better get cleaned up for supper. But lightning. You, you got better to... come too, Mr. Throckmorton. We'll all go up to the room until supper time. Gladly, sir. Gladly. <laughs> Well, uh, what are we riding out this way for, Lightning? Oh, nothing in particular, Whitey. Just thought a little fresh air and exercise do us good. Besides, Thunder, he ain't used to taking a vacation. He might take it into his head to yeah, join the wild horses. Yeah, are you sure you ain't figuring on uh, joining up with the party? Oh, reckon Sheriff Bunny can handle his own party. Ha, ha, ha. Say, Whitey, didn't it do your heart good to see that actor fella eat tonight? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I tell you, he sure can recite first the poetry. He sure can. 
When night me, you, you ain't going to let them send this kid to Yale for you. You must send Dory. Can't see that we can do nothing about it, Whitey. Lightning, I, I can't understand the way you're acting. Why, right? you know everybody else is taking it for granted that we're this guilty. Why, right? they ain't even trying to find out if somebody else could have done the wrong. Well, maybe we'll catch the boy. Hey, here's somebody shooting. Yeah, come on, Thunder. Come on, boy. Come on, buddy. Come from over here. Yo, look, Sammy. There it is. Sounded like the sheriff. Jeff Bunny, that you? What's the trouble? Did you catch me then, Mr. Oh, Thunder, oh, boy. I had him right in my hand and he tricked me. The trick set him as funny. But he won't get away with it. Mark my word, I'll get him. What happened? Where is he? Uh, we went up to his house. He wasn't home. Uh, we figured he'd bamboo. Yeah? Uh, the posse decided to separate. Uh, better chance of finding him. Well, I, I came this way and all of a sudden there he was. Right in front of me with his milk cans. Bold as brass. Uh, milk cans? Uh, what milk cans? Uh, he said he was going to deliver his evening milk to Ma Weatherford. Claimed he didn't know nothing about no robbery. Well, I... I put him under arrest, and I got him up here in the saddle in front of me. What saddle, and uh, where's your horse? Uh, will you let me tell this my way? Go on. I pulled him up here, not thinking that he was up to no tricks. Uh, not with me having tight hold on him. Yo, oh, and then what happened? The darned ornery backstep in the hypocrite. He hit me over the head with one of his milk cans, knocked me clean off the horse and rode off. Hold on now, you say he knocked you out with a milk can? Not out, just off. I'm all covered with milk, too. Dang, the lift came off the can. Oh! Well, what happened, Sheriff? We heard the show. Yeah, yeah, and the what? prisoner got away. He tricked me vicious like. Nearly killed me, too, and, and got plumb away on my horse. I reckon that makes a horse thief out of him, too. And he's guilty of arrest this and an arrest. Yeah. yeah, and assaulting an officer and a discharge of his silly. Yeah. Well, I reckon this proves it, man. Wade must be guilty or wouldn't have run away. Ain't that right? Sure, sure. Is. Yes. Yeah, he's guilty as all get out. That's what he is. Yeah, and when we find him, I reckon we'll know how to take care of him. Yeah, sure well, we sure will. We'll start hunting again tomorrow. I gotta get home now and get some dry clothes. But we'll get him. And when we do, well, he'll find out what it means to attack the sheriff. <laughs> Is Wade Emerson, son of a thief, turned thief himself? Will the sheriff catch him? What part is Jim going to play in the capture? And just how does the old Shakespearean actor fit into the picture? All these questions will be answered in part two, which follows immediately. And now for part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim. The next morning, Sheriff Bunny and several of the citizens are talking over the robbery in the local dine and dance palace. Well, he's guilty and he ought to be hanged before he goes the way of his old man. Yes, That's sir. what I say. Ain't no use treating his kind with gloves. The rope's what they need. I, I knew it all the time. I said to myself, I said, that Wade Everson ain't up to no good. He'll bear watching. Sure, pretending to be gone straight. Trying to peddle his three, four quarts of milk and a few chickens. I wasn't talking none either. Oh, pardon me, sir, but I'm looking for some information. Uh, well, you came to the right person for information, all right. I'm the sheriff here. What do you want to know? I'm desirous of buying some land around here. I've heard quite a bit about your fair community. Best county in the state. And I'm the sheriff who's going to keep it that way. I'm pleased to know that the citizens have such able protection, sir. Allow me to introduce myself. Hey, boys. Yeah. Uh, boys, here, here's a newcomer. Figuring on settling in our midst. Uh, what'd you say your name was, stranger? I was just about to tell you. My name is Augustus Shaw. I'm from New York State, and I've come out here to settle down and spend my declining years in your splendid flight. Well, yeah. 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 those folks in New York cared about Pecos, all right. Yeah, well, glad to have you join us, Mr. Shaw. Have you decided on where you're going to live yet, Mr. Shaw? No, no, I've just arrived in town today. I was figuring on renting a horse someplace and riding out to look over the country. Well, I can fix you up with a horse, all right. Uh, mine came home this morning, but 
<laughs> well, um, after the accident I had last night, I don't think I'll be riding for a couple of days yet. <laughs> I don't think you will be either. Now, now, now you right. Jaspers needn't laugh. I reckon you'd be sore, too, if you got flung off a horse when you wasn't looking and landed... Uh, well... Landed, yeah, you landed, all right. Very good. But I'll get the thieving buzzard, or my name's not Steptimus Bunny. Yeah, me, this is alarming. You mean there's a thief loose in the community? Well, he won't be loose long. I got my posse out looking for him right now, and when they find him... I they... trust that'll be soon, because I have quite a sizable roll of bills on me, for the purchase price, you know. You, you mean you're, you're carrying enough cash on you to buy a ranch around here? It's my custom always, to pay cash for everything. I have about $10,000 on me, which should be sufficient as a deposit, don't you think? $10,000? You ain't serious. Uh, you shouldn't be carrying such an amount around. At least not until we catch this Wade Emerson. Why, if he'd find out about that, he'd slit your throat for you. I'm not easily intimidated, I assure you, gentlemen. I came here to look around for a ranch, and I do not intend to lose any time. Sheriff. Will you kindly accommodate me with that horse you were talking about? Uh, sure, uh, certainly, Mr. Shaw. Uh, you come along with me. But if you'll take my advice, you'll let me lock that money up in my desk at the jail. I'm quite capable of taking care of it myself. I don't think your bandit is likely to hold me up. Besides, your posse is out after this highwayman, isn't it? Uh, my posse? Uh, oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, sure to get him any minute now. Any minute. <laughs> Slow down there, Thunder. Take it easy, boy. We ain't going for a canter this morning. This is business. No, oh, there may be business to you, Lightning, but they're a sure a take fog to me. What are we doing out there anyway? What you looking for? What are you up to? Well, what I didn't want to tell you before, because I didn't want you to go thinking I was crazy. Lightning, you know I think anything you do is all right. Come now, what's bothering Well, I didn't feel right about this Wade boy somehow. Ma Weatherford's so sure he's a good, decent boy. Trying to go straight. And that sheriff ain't even trying to find nobody else to fit the crime. No, reckon he makes a practice of looking right under his nose and no place else. Well, are we looking for Wade now? Is that why we are here, Lightning? No, at least for Ma Weatherford's sake, I hope it ain't. You see, Whitey, I got Throckmorton to help me try a little experiment. Oh, you mean the Shakespeare fella? Yeah. Oh, well, what's he going to do? Well, I gave him some money. Enough to be convincing at first glance, and we filled it out with some stage money. Oh, he well, had. oh, he reckon he uses that stage money when he plays poker. <laughs> I ain't inviting in, none into that, way. And maybe I won't see my money again, neither. But I have to take a chance. You see, I fixed it with Throckmorton, so it was to make out like it was just a simple Jasper, carrying a lot of money and riding around the country looking for a likely ranch. Oh, to buy. You, you think that the real thief would try to get the money Throckmorton is carrying? Yeah, that's it. I told Throckmorton to do a lot of talking, you know, all around town, so that everybody would be sure to know about him. Yo, but is that dangerous for Throckmorton? Oh, no, I don't think this thief's a killer. Didn't hit Joe Silvers last night any harder than he had to, and that's why you and me are here, Whitey. Throckmorton's supposed to be riding out this trail just about now. Oh, you get that all fixed up with time schedules and everything. Only way to do it, Whitey. Up until now, he's supposed to be riding around town, close enough that nobody would take a chance on hurting him. Then he's supposed to start out this way. And when he goes by... And that's the road over there. Yeah, well, we trail him. Keep him to the side, of course. And if the thief takes the bait, we get him. See, lightning. Must that in the road up ahead? Looks like a man lying in the road, Whitey. Up, Thunder. Oh, boy. Oh, Thunder. Oh, boy. Why, it's Throckmorton. He's been struck on the head. Right, then. Is he dead? No, he's still breathing. He's... Oh. Can you talk, Throckmorton? Oh. Come on, tell us. Who did it? Oh, my head. Lie still, old man. We have you back in town in a few minutes to a doctor. Did you see who did it? I couldn't see anything. I was coming along just as you'd arranged very carefully to the right and to the left, yes. and then... Hey, what happened? Did he, did he shoot you? No, no. He tossed one of those crude jumping ropes. Uh, oh, uh, what do you call them? <laughs> Lariat, lassos, or whatever you want to call them. You got roped like a steer? Oh, it was the most humiliating experience I ever had. I remember once in Boston, uh, when I was playing... Uh, yes, King Lear. They threw eggs at me. Ah, but this was much worse. Much worse. Oh, I ache all over. All over. Yeah, but couldn't you see the, the, this fella at all? No, it all happened so suddenly. And then, 
Then I caught a glimpse of a shape. Yeah. Just a shape, bending over me, and that dastardly villain must have struck me when I was down. Because that's all I remember. Several hours later, we find the three men sitting disconsolately in Jim's bedroom. Yeah, I can't tell you how sorry I am that I got you into this, sir. I thought we might be able to find a real thief, but, well, I guess it was too slow. Well, I reckon the critter was so bold he just grabbed the first chance he got to find Mr. Throckmorton alone. Think nothing of it, my dear sir. Nothing of it. Albert Throckmorton is always willing to be of service to his country and his fellow men. Although having to use a pillow has its inconvenience. See, if I step them off, the force seems to be in the yes, hurry. something must have happened. <clears throat> Marshal, you've just got to do something now. The sheriff sent me. He's scared. What's the matter, Ma? Say, you're shaking all over. Here, sit down. Oh, there ain't no time to sit down now. They just found that poor boy Wade. Yeah? And the whole town's worked up to the point of hanging him. Hanging him? Where's Bunny? Oh, Septimus Bunny's got Wade in jail right now. And he aims to keep him there. Septimus ain't a mean man, Marshal. He's just dumb, that's all. Now, now that the mob's forming, he sent me here to get you. Now, you just got to help sure. me. Sure. Tell me, are all the town people down there, Ma? Yep, every last soul in town. They ain't started nothing yet, but they're likely to at any time. Whitey, that's our chance. You take care of that little thing we were talking about and do it quick. Lightning, I'm on my feet right now. Come on, Throckmorton. Here's another chance for you to give some service. I'm following you, my dear sir. But I hope, I hope none of those good people throw eggs at me. Hey, hey, Marshal, you got here. Oh, I never was so glad to see anybody. Well, we had some trouble getting through that crowd. Oh, they're much worse than the people I met in Boston. Much worse. Hey, listen to me, Marshal. I arrested Wade in there because I think he's the thief. But I don't hold with no lynching. And there ain't no mob going to take my prisoner away from me. Not unless they do it over my dead body. Good for you, Sheriff. I'm right with you on that. We'll hold him off somehow. Where is the young culprit? Has he confessed? Given up his ill-gotten gain? I've got him there in the back, far away from the crowd as I could get him. He ain't said nothing except that he didn't do it. And he keeps on saying he didn't do it. I can't get nothing else out of him. Hey, give him up, Sheriff, or we're coming in after him. Open that door, Sheriff. Uh, what's he talking about? Are you crazy? I'm not opening that door until that mob goes away. No, that will work. Listen, open that door. I'll stand there in the entrance and, well, I don't reckon nobody will get in unless they get me first. Go on, now. We're giving you just ten seconds. Well, he's the fastest shot in the country. Hold on, hold on, men. Hold on. Just how did you get in this game, Marshal? Ain't the sheriff here capable of taking care of his prisoner? You keep your trap shut, John Marvin. You're getting much too uppity lately. Lightning. Oh, lightning. You was right. You found it, buddy? I saw every bit of a lightning. It was hid right there in the free day, you stiff. Except for about $15. Reach for the sky, John Marvin. Well, now, well, now, now, you're crazy. Hold you. on, men. Hold on. Just how do you explain the fact that all the money taken from Joe Silvers and from my friend Throckmorton here was found in your desk at the freight office? What? It's a frame-up, a dirty frame-up. Quiet. Search him, Whitey. Go on. Keep your hands up, Marvin. I'll make you pay for this. You got no right searching me. Sheriff, do your duty. Yeah, I don't know what this is all about, but nobody better start nothing. That's all I got to say. You hear it is, Lightning. Fifteen dollars in bills. You fool. What does that prove? Plenty of people are carrying $15 around with them. Doc Morton, look them bills over. Gladly, sir, gladly. Hmm. Yes, yes. Here are the markings. Clearly. Good. In the first place, Marvin, it ain't altogether common for people out here to be carrying bills. We run more to hard money. But more important, Doc Morton here, who played the part of Shaw today, marked the bills he took with him. Then this dirty, double-crossing, smooth-talking, pop-eyed roadrunner is the real thief? Right, and I suggest that you lock him up, Sheriff, now. Listen, Sheriff, now that you got the rail bandit, there's a boy back there in jail, never did nothing, except to be unfortunate enough to have a thief for a father. He tried to live decent here with you, and none of you ever give him a break. Well, I... I, I want you to know I, I'm sure sorry for what we've done, Marshal. I reckon we can make it up to the boys some way. Well, I hope so, Sheriff. You see, I never would have gotten into this thing except that it was all too cut and dried. Why, an hour after I got in town, I hear how the folks around here just waiting for Wade Emerson to do something wrong. Yo, and this Marvin was the first one to tell us about Wade and how his pa had been a thief yeah. and all that. The setup was made to order. Marvin could commit a crime and... Pronto, everybody would suspect Wade. 
The boy didn't, who wouldn't stand a chance. Well, well, well uh, how come you suspected Marvin? Well, I didn't really, Sheriff, except that he tried just a little too hard to throw suspicion on Wade and to stir up the folks to lynch him, the boy. It was the Mark Bills that did the trick. Them and the splendid acting of Throckmorton, you hear? Thank you, my kind. Now, ah, listen, Sheriff, in the future, you better not be so quick to judge a man by the name that's given. Yes, Marshal. Verily, the quality of mercy is not free. See, I remember that thought. You thought that to me last night. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as, as the gentle rain, rain from, from heaven, heaven upon the plate Feeling. It is right, right. And so ends another dramatic episode in the lives of those two famous marshals of the Old West, Lightning Jim Whipple and his deputy, Whitey Larson. Mm -hmm.